Uh, welcome, my dear cousin. I, I am so nervous. I don't know where to start. Welcome to Romancing Grenada, Caracol, and P.T. Martinic. You are Dr. Orlando Walter Simmons, or Walter Orlando Simmons. You are, um, we, have, we have so much in common that I am shaken. We are Seventh-day Adventists. I found out to Trevor, and I already knew some of it, that you were related. I remember your great your grandfather, mm -hmm. um, cousin Bouge. That's right. Is uh, <laughs> one of the founding fathers of the uh, Paradise Church, Seventh Day Adventist Church. You went to Saint Andrew's Anglican Secondary School, and now you are a PhD in economics and finance. Correct. You are um, you're in, uh, your expertise. I read uh, is in uh, business statistics labor economies economic analysis of law you also you're working on your current research has to do with west the west indian uh in the labor market versus the american labor market so you tell us a little bit about that later on in the show i am going to break the show into three parts because i think we're going to have a lot to talk about okay because from trevor modest who you say you knew as trevor james <laughs> I learned that you guys started with your athleticism in the Coco in Paradise. Yes. So let's start right there. And um, I, I have some secrets I'm gonna um, reveal to the world. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna start though with the Coco. So tell me about yourself. Tell me about growing up in the having sports in the Coco because you didn't grow up in the Coco. Well, close to the Coco. I'm on the border with the Coco. So okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. Well, thanks for having me. I, I think it's a great privilege to be here. And um, the first time I saw your show, I was like, well, this is so relevant and this is so needed. You know, and I have not connected much with Grenada since I left in 1982. So I felt that at this point in time, it was just a good time for me to be connected. So thank you for having me here. So going back to my growing up, yes, I grew up in paradise right by the junction there, the intersection going to Simoon and then going up to Certes. That gas station there, the Shell gas station, was the land belonged to my grandparents. That's Melo, Bouge, Douglas, you know, mm -hmm. but it was leased to Shell Antilles, you know. Oh, really? Tell you more about that, how much they paid for the lease and all that type of stuff and so on. You know, it was, uh, you know, those folks knew how to utilize and exploit our local people. Anyway, so I grew up there, and as baby Trevor told you, we started, you know, in terms of, so my mom, my but mom. Sorry, sorry, one, you're missing something. Um, are you related to African Teller, the California? Well, well yes, um, right. African Teller, African Teller was my next door neighbor. Right behind me was African Teller's home. Yes. So African Teller's mother and grandmother are related to us. So we, are, yes, indeed, I am related to African Teller. Okay. I used to listen to African Teller music every night, playing that guitar, <laughs> you know, it's, you know, so, so I grew right. up with African Teller. We grew up in the same yard. As You're you right. Said. You're right. So we grew up there. Mm -hmm. And my mother, I have to talk about my mom. So to, you know, my mom is, you know, this was the most influential person in my life, you know, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that, you know, her prayers, you know, I'm um, getting up five o'clock in the morning to go running and my mom gets up every morning and prays with me before I go out. I mean, I'm, wow. every morning. Yes. Wow. Five in the morning, you know, she died young at 62, but you know, oh, sorry. So I, I, yeah. So I miss my mom. So growing up there in, um, in Paradise Junction, Big yard, lots of people. So the athletics started really. Trevor is right. And the Coco, this guy, Farrell. So Farrell lived, you know, he had a long, uh, what did I say? A long grass path. And these guys were ingenious because here he is Farrell and he's putting on this event called the games, the Coco games. Mm -hmm. And we used to just run and <laughs> we, I mean, we just ran, you know, and I just so happened to be fast. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, no, no special training, you know, but that's where, where he's right, five, six years old, you know. And when I said Trevor was my neighbor, Trevor lived about maybe about mm, 600 yards from me. All right. Yeah, just in the back of, yeah. Yeah. So, so that's that's basically where we started, yeah. So Trevor and I are both from Paradise. So I knew Trevor and I kind of grew up together, yeah. 
So as uh, you're an Adventist, and I remember us coming to, <laughs> you wouldn't remember me because I was a taught maybe an irritant to an older boy like you, <laughs> coming to your grandfather's house for lunch on Saturdays. So you're now ready to go to high school. Why SAS and not Montrose? Because I would think Montrose was already uh, built there. Well, you know, Montrose, I mean, Montrose started technically in 1958, but the school that's on the present site basically started there around 1972. Yes. So I went to SAS in 1973. And at that time, all the Douglases went to SAS. Oh. All the <laughs> Douglases were in Pickett House. You know, the green house. Pick oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So well, actually it doesn't show up, but I am wearing my green. It looks quite white, I can tell, <laughs> but it's green. <laughs> yeah. So we we and then my my sisters Claudette my older sister Claudette and my middle sister Priscilla, they all went to SAS. Then Patricia Douglas, they all went to SAS. So, okay. you know. Family tradition. Right. So the tradition was you go to Methodist and from Methodist, you go to SAS. You right. know, so from, I went to Methodist school and from Methodist school, I went to SAS. So yeah, let's talk about SAS because from a discussion, you told me you went through the three building, the three stages of SAS. Yes, I went from <laughs> I went from pool to pavilion, then to telescope. So I started <laughs> in Grenville at the Nutmeg Pool in right. 1973, and then 1974 we moved to Simoon, the Simoon Pavilion. But the nice thing about that though is that um, we moved the students moved moved all the desks and chairs. You know, oh. yeah, during the summer we loaded up the trucks and so on. And we made about four or five trips from Grenville to Simon Pavilion, carrying the wow. chairs and the desks and everything, you know. That's so, with the family affairs though. Yes, <laughs> yes. And the experience at the pool was kind of great too, because I remember I had a white, I don't know if he was a Pisco worker or something like that, a white teacher, Crank, Mr. Crank in Form 1. Mm -hmm. you know? So, and then Mr. Eric Donald started with us, but that's, that's where I started. So from the pool, we went to the pavilion that was in Simoon. Mm -hmm. So, and that's where so I'm from 74, I'm in Simoon. Okay. <laughs> I, I remember, um, I was quite young, but I remember when hearing that Sass is moving from the pool to Simoon. And I remember one of the older ladies saying, well, you don't see the motto is always sailing. So they're yes. going to always be moving. <laughs> Temple navigants, so we, we were always sailing. Mm -hmm. But remember, at the time, you know, this, the race the race track was still there. The mm -hmm. paddocks with the horses, you know. Right. So in the morning when we come, the guys are still training and so on, you know. The, you know. So all this is still happening, you know, Ooh. while school is going on. <laughs> so, that must have been know. distracting because the pavilion's open. Yeah, the pavilion is open and sometimes when it rains, the rain comes in a bit, you know. <laughs> so we have to, you, you, you adjust the things, you know, you make adjustments. Mm -hmm. So that, that was an experience. So from 74 to 78, we were in at the pavilion and in 78, we moved to telescope. So when did you start with your, tra with your, your track and field? Um, you did, well, you did track we started, events. We started around 73, but in 70, I think in 73, there was no, in, uh, 70, 73 or 74, there was no intercall. But I really started going in 75, 76, so I would say from 75, 76, 77, 78, I was from a junior, from a sub-junior to a junior, I always won the 100, the 200, the 200, the relays, then the long jump. But within that period, we had, we had some outstanding athletes like Matthew Parrott, you know, you know, from Grenville. And so we had Matthew Parrott, then Trevor, Trevor and them came to SAS. Trevor came around 75 yeah. to SAS. I think tricks and then maybe came around semi, either 74, 75, but I was, I was, they, they, they were not in Gren, Grenville, you know, I was the one, only one left over from Grenville. And uh, that's where we started. Our track meet was on the tracks where the horses ran. Right. You, know? well, you had nice flat grass at least. Well, we had nice grass, but like for the four and the 800, it started, <laughs> it started way back, well, almost on the beach. You know, That's what I was thinking. So when the 400 started, you couldn't see the athletes until they came <laughs> on the street. 
<laughs> you know, because you, you have the black stage and all the coconut and trees. And the coconut trees, right. So you really can't see anything <laughs> until it, you come up, you came on the street, straight away. And then, you, you know, it's, but it's, but by then, you know, and we were all, by that time, most of us were beer-fitted. You know, we, we, we don't, we're not running with shoes and, you know, it's, but right. it was, you know, and then we had sports was not just the, the field events and so on. We had things like, for example, I remember the tug of war, you know, oh, I mean, yeah. because at one time Pickett House, we, you know, Pickett House Tricks, um, myself, um, Roland Joseph, Glyden Christopher, Joseph Henry, I mean, the SAS, half of the SAS senior team were in Pickett House. So we had some, we had some real strong guys until Big Livingston and, you know, and they then came. Yeah. The, the big guys up from Tivoli. <laughs> Massive, you know. I have, uh, I think, though, I have pictures, which I'm going to show in a little while, but I think... Um, I know that's when Lane started to win, and it's <laughs> after after we left in 1980. Then yeah. Livingston and those guys, you know, they just they they took over. They they yes, mm -hmm, definitely. <laughs> so I have a, a picture from. Well, let's talk about intercall though. But you inter school sports, Pegots winning and so on. And now, are you an athlete or are you just a runner? Um, well, in SAS, right? In SAS, you had to do everything, right? Okay. So in my time, I did long jump, so, sorry, 100, 200, long jump, triple jump, and sometimes I ran the four. But then I threw the discus and so on. But tr guys like dominated the field events at that time, Trix and Trevor James were the big guys for the javelin, the discus. So I'll compete, I'll come in third in the field event. But I, I'm winning the hundred and the two hundred. Okay. Know, because so Pigot, Pigot's I don't think the I ever point. lost the hundred and two hundred in SAS. You never. You no, know, for for the time that for the time I was there, but around that time too, you know, we had some. Um, I remember in 1978, we were celebrating the 150 years of the of the establishment of the Anglican Church in the Windward Islands. So we went on a trip up the islands to St. Vincent, Canawan, Bakeway with Anglican High School. That's on a boat now. Yes. <laughs> that was really exciting. That's where Glide and Christopher Bakeway, that's where he got his name from because we went to Bakeway. So we spent time in St. Vincent. I'm telling you, the first, I mean, the first couple hours of that trip, man, most of us were just puking up, you know, because, you know. But and again, the boat was it, slow. It yeah. probably was a wind jammer. Yes, well, and you know the sailboat. You know, they had an engine too, but you know oh, coming yeah. back was great. But then we get to play cricket, soccer, well football and mm -hmm. athletics, and we go. To, we went to Bakeway, Canawan, Mustic. Oh, you know, all the Grenadines. The phenomenal trip, the experiences and so on that we had there. You know, that you is know. nice. No, so now intercall. So I have this intercall team, and you're on it. And uh, I'm gonna share the screen. Mm -hmm. Trevor said to me the picture. I'm he's. I'm gonna show is um a picture of champions. <laughs> yeah. So uh, record breakers. And the thing is, again, I have my pictures open. I, I'm prepared, but now my pictures are behind. <laughs> Behind our screen, <laughs> it'll come. It'll come through. All right. Oh, sorry. So, let me just share this. Uh, I found. Um, let me just show a little bit what I found about you on the internet before I, I bring up the other screen so I could close it. So I'm sharing the screen now. Do you know this handsome fellow here? Yeah, that's me. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Thanks, thanks for sharing that. That's um. I'm currently I'm currently at John Carroll University. John Carroll is one of the 28 Jesuit Catholic school. Pe most people may be familiar with the with the bigger ones like Georgetown and Boston College. You mm -hmm. know, they are also Jesuit schools. You know, where basically the presidents are priests. These days, they have a lot of lay people that are priests. So I've been at John Carroll for a while, you know, and I'm currently the 
a social media dean of the business school, and um, I run all the international programs. So I get to travel a lot to Africa, to Asia, to Europe. Oh, wow, 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 and very I good. I run all the MBA programs there. So that's, that's what I do currently. Congratulations, congratulations. You're doing us proud. And I'm going to uh, close this one. I just wanted to share it and start with the pictures. Okay, this is the picture you sent me first. So yes, yes. I, yes. I, I kept it because I want, there's some people in it. Yes, so moving from, yeah, if you move, well, from the from the left to the right, you see Patrick Simmons, that's Patrick here, right? Exactly. Yes, that's, that's Trix. That's mm -hmm. Trevor James, Trevor right. Modest. Trevor yeah. Modest, yes. Yes, that's Trevor, that's Walter Simmons there. Uh -huh. And next to me there is Roland Joseph, Roland Tiki Joseph, <laughs> but now he's Henry Lewis. Oh, okay. <laughs> so everybody yeah, knows so, you as, as and Walter. And next to Roland Tiki is, yes, Walter, Walter Orlando, most people know me as, yes, definitely. Yeah, as, and next to Roland is um, Joseph Henry, Babylon. That's Barbelli. Every time I see him, he looks different, so yeah, I really can is in New York. Next to Babylon is, yeah, that's Babylon. That's Carl Barito. Barito. Barito is also in New York. He was a long jumper. Yes. Mm -hmm. A long jumper. And then, so the big guy there, Mr. Livingston Nelson. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> and there were juniors there. Because <laughs> the seniors, the, the four of us to the left are seniors. Right. Uh, Trix, Trevor, myself, and Tiki are seniors. Right. And all the others are juniors. Juniors, you know. And next to next to um, Livingston was, I forget his name, but his name was Gunny, you know. And Gunny. in front of them was Gunny was from up your side of them. Gunny Andrews. Yes, yes. Right. Yes. I up. thought so, but they told me Bunny, and I'm thinking he looks like Gunny, but I didn't mm. quite know Gunny when he was that young, so yes. I couldn't appreciate. That's sure. Gunny. Gunny. Gunny and Andrews. In the front row is Christiana Lashington. Mm -hmm. That is Lashington, yes. Miss Lashington. So you see that team there in um in 1980. I mean. Myself, Trix, Trevor, the guy that's missing there is Glide and Christopher too. I mean, I mean, this team basically won Intercal, you know, in 1980. You know. That's that's what I was hearing when Trevor was saying, like probably just three athletes. Yes, yes yeah. because um I won the one, the two, Two tricks came second in almost all those events. On all the field events, tricks came second in almost all of them. Then we won the four by one. I think we came, we didn't win the four by four. But and then the junior guys, Livingston and you know, and Bunny and Bunny, yeah. yes, you know. So this was a phenomenal team because we've never won, we never won Intercall before 1980. So you're the first team. That's the first thing that ever has ever won Intercall. Yes, that's what oh, we started. So this is history. So let, let me show you a, a little bit in color um, because I, Trevor um, sent me a, a colored picture and I may have labeled you wrongly here. Are you seeing? Oh, Can you, this is you though? Close to Trevor? Yes. So in this one here to the left, that's me here. Right, that's me there. Okay. Yes. And next to me is Bobby Lee. Yes. yes. Then Barito, correct? Then Gunny, right? So Gunny, that I have to change because yes. I, they were told me Bunny and I... Okay. No, Gunny and next to him is... is Godfrey. Godfrey, yes. So we're still missing one of the athletes, one of the senior guys, you said. Yeah, and you know, then we're missing guys like Trix and um, oh, yes. Tiki and Glyden and um, Livingston. But he's, Trevor said to me, those were the record breakers. So this is 1980 record breakers. Correct, yes. Correct. Right. That's 1980 record breakers. So I, I, but, I would fix that. And I, I want to backtrack a little bit because before 1980, you know, we went to Intercall, but, you know, 76, 77, you know, we went and it was more individual. Well, okay, there was a guy in GBSS called Ellis Maitland. So it was like, oh, Walter, Lando, and Maitland in the 100 and the 200. Then remember now, Trevor and them now, they're coming into their own now. So Trevor is getting stronger. Now Trevor, Trevor was the, how should I put it? 
Trevor was the most serious one about athletics. Trevor trained with big stone, with bamboo. Anyway, you see Trevor, he's throwing a javelin with a, with a piece of, with a rod. We go to the river. I mean, he was very focused. There was no if ends about it with Trevor. But it goes back to the classroom. Mm -hmm. Trevor was a genius in geography. He knew each and every country in the world. We used to play map and you, you know, say, show me this country. You see, he became a forensic scientist. Nothing happens by chance, you know. This guy, yeah. his, his ability to pay attention to details and so on. This guy knew the world map like, I'm telling you, you know, he, he just knew those things. We were like, how do you know that? Self-made, self-motivated, you know, and he had a, he had an attitude. You know, people think Trevor is like, no, oh. you know, he, he was just so focused, you know, we are a little bit more casual and so on, but Trevor, no, Trevor, success and his discipline. His discipline. I've heard about that. I've... Yes. No. I mean, I mean, he, he was a mentor to Livingston, you know, and, and Eugene Liquish and so on. And for the, the years, I mean, he just, that's one of the guys, he and Tricks, you know, they stayed in Grenada and they did it. I mean, I left after 1982, but those guys stayed and they work with the local folks and, you know, but mm -hmm. Trevor is exceptional, I would say. Mentorship, he's, he's a great mentor. He, excellent, excellent, excellent. You know, you can't, you know. And then, so in 19, so 79, I think Trevor went to the Carifta Games. Yeah. And then I didn't even make the national team until 81 because I left SAS in 1980. Mm -hmm. Then I taught for two years in SAS right. from 1980 to 1982. So in 1981, that's when I made my first trip. I went to the Central American and Caribbean Games in Santo Domingo with people like um, Donald Pierre, um, Morris Bull, Williams, Conrad Francis, you know, okay. those were the squad. Then I went to another meet in um in Martinique. And the one in Central, the one in McDonald, Quarry and them. Sorry, that's, we didn't hear what happened in Martinique. And in Martinique, that's when I had the opportunity. I remember, you remember Benjamin Johnson? Yes. <laughs> you ran Ben you Johnson, ran. the Canadian printer. Yeah, yes. I ran with Ben Martinique. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How did you do? Well, you know, I just barely made it out of the first run because, you okay. know, you're coming from Greenland, we're still running our, our 10, 7, 10, 8. Remember now, at that time, that was 1981. Right. You know? And then and I went, yes, that's the first time I saw Ben because that time he just coming into his own. You know, he mm -hmm. wasn't, he wasn't up there yet, you know. Yes. There was this team that came down to the games in Martinique and then we had a Grenadian team there. And then I went to another meet in Trinidad that day, times, uh, times of Hensley Crawford, 1976 right. Olympian. So those are my three meets for the national team, you know. All right. But, uh, but at, at that time, so, so for Intercal, Intercal was great. And then there is another individual I want to talk about who is Dominic Mitchell. Dominic is in Canada. Dominic was a genius mm -hmm. because I spent seven years in SAS. I started. I did SAS 73 and I spent, I graduated 80 because most people after they, they spend two years in sec, two years in form five and then they leave. Well, I stayed in form five and I did A levels. I did. Yes, I was going to come there because you told okay. me you had a sixth form. Um, so a few of you. Yes. And, and uh, in telling me about that, so I'm, I'm speaking to other people, but I said, you know, I am speaking to Dr. Simmons and he's, he told me he did A-levels in SAS. This is something I never knew. I don't know how many people know. And uh, I was told, well, you know, Chris, you really did like him because uh, <laughs> <laughs> he, he used to date Cressy's daughter. So Cressy wanted him there. Yeah, I was, I, I, I would say that. Most sure of the things. you were bright enough. Uh, I'll talk about that a little bit. Yes, but they, they think that I was, I was Cressy's boy. I think I, 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 I would say that. Because uh, let, let me get <laughs> so we stayed in SAS myself, Dominique, Allison, who is Chris's daughter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, you froze again. So, and um, well, that was my girlfriend. You know, man, yeah. No. So our, our our well, we didn't have an office, so we were in Chris's office. 
So, okay, so we, Cressy has a big office and we had our desk <laughs> in Cressy's office. Right. Quoting all morning, you've been just quoting all morning, Simmons, you know, so. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you, you're not doing any stuff. <laughs> so you got scolded sometimes for You've been quoting all morning. <laughs> you know, so, so we, we went up. Yeah, we stayed in Cressy's office. Don Nick did biology and chemistry. I mean, the guy did, we had no lab. I mean, really, his mom was a nurse. So he had, you know, he had, he read all the nursing books and so on. And he, and he did biology and so on at a level. It was about seven of us, but no, we were not the first. Before that, we had um, Claudia Mark, and I think even Chris's son, you know, Junior, did mm -hmm. some A-levels there. But we, sta we stayed, myself, Dominic, and in 1980, you got to remember too, Dominic won the long, the high jump because he beat Jericho. Jericho was the GBSS top-notch guy. I mean, he really shattered him that day, you Ooh. know. And Jericho became a big, a big disc jockey. Unfortunately, he died a couple of years ago. Oh, know? oh, sorry, I was gonna go look for him. <laughs> uh, yes. So Dominic Mitchell, Dominic is kind of, kind of reclusive, very quiet. You know, he still comes to Grenada with his bike. He rides all over Grenada. You see, another thing Dominic and I used to do is that we used to go hiking. So we'll walk around Grenada Sunday morning. We we'll leave home four o'clock. Go set. There's go all the way to St. George's, myself and Dominic and Vivian Filbert. You know, we used to explore. Oh, Vivian Filbert is from Ladig. Yes, of course. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Vivian, he's, he's in a, um, he's in London now. A friend of mine, Vivian Filbert. Mm -hmm. so we, we used to do, I mean, a couple of times we were picked, we were picked up by the PRG because we used to be all up in the mountains, you know, just hiking. Right. Know? So we were picked up, but then after they realized that, you know, those are some guys. You're not, you're, you're not destabilizers. <laughs> exactly. But, but a couple of times that we, we were picked up. You know. but, so, but it was, it, it was, it was just a lot of fun. It was just, I want to go back again. No, so remember now, so 76, 77, when you won any event and you broke a record, mm -hmm. then you were invited to the botanical gardens by mm -hmm. Uncle Gary. You know, Uncle Gary, yeah. <laughs> I mean, hey, listen, and um, he was very, you know, I don't know if you know, like, if you know about Progress Park and how Progress Park came about and those type of stuff, you know, you know. But you can tell me. I heard, I'm not sure what I know. Well, people give stories and so on, but, you know, and I'm not saying my story is authentic, but, you know, remember now, going up to the airport, we used to be playing cricket in the road and soccer in the road and so on, you know. And we could remember that, you know, uncle coming up to the airport and seeing us and so on. He said, hey, we're gonna, I'm going to give you guys a park. You guys have to stop playing cricket in the road and so on. And then what progress park is there? You know, I mean, the story, we have to validate the story, but that's part of our, that's, that's our story. Right. You know, and yeah. then progress park started in the seventies, you know, gradually expanded and so on, you know, and then, but going back to the botanical gardens, man, you go back to the botanical gardens, and if you look behind me, you see, let me just put my, you see that little jacket there, that Adidas jacket? <laughs> yes. It's given to me by Uncle Gary. <laughs> well, you can't even go on to, I can't, it can't fit me now. You can't go on. Oh, well, no, it. you got to keep it there. <laughs> oh, yeah. that's, that, so that, that, that jacket there. Uncle Gary jacket for, for breaking a record. Oh, yes, yes, yes. You know, no, there was encouragement for you to keep. Oh, more. definitely. And that happened from, yeah, he invited everyone to the botanic. Now, remember now, going to St. George's was like a little privilege back then, you know, because most of us, from, we never went to St. George's unless we go into some dentist, some medical thing, you know, we don't go to St. George's. So we went down to St. George's, man, and we dress up in our, you know, in our little best, you know, and Cressy was very much like that. Cressy was like, you know, you got to look your best. You know, you know, you're not just going somewhere, you know, anyhow, you know, you have to look your best. And we went into the botanical gardens and we sat in and he came around. It was almost like mystical. You know, he came, shake our hands and congratulate us. And you know, he's a very proper guy. Yes. Oh, yeah. But yes. he was in the white suit. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Well dressed from head to toe. <laughs> oh, yes. 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 But you were his guest. So I think he oh, was. Oh, yes, definitely. And I went there, but twice. You know, not one time. The other we get we got other gifts and so on too, you know. 
But, but the, why he had an office in the Botanic Gardens? I, I, I have no idea. But <laughs> <laughs> that's where you met. Yes. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. That's 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 where we met. You know, and it was. And so that, so my, you know, so I, I there are certain things I keep. I keep. I like, I like the blue track suit. So. Oh, yes. <laughs> so I remember uncle, this is, this is, this is the gift from uncle Gary. And uncle Gary is from your area. Uh, yes. Yes. Because but that didn't mean, it meant you had to break a record still to be recognized and to get this gift. It didn't just give it away because no, 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 it. no, no. You have you have to work for it, you know, you know, and that's the thing, you know. You have to be disciplined, you know, and you have to we have to we have to earn things, you know. It's not about just, you know, you know, we you work hard and in SAS that was the that was you know we didn't we, at that time you know I don't think we thought we were working hard. We are just we are having fun, mm -hmm. but around seventy nine eighty because seventy nine we almost won Intercall. And that's when we realize now we have to be more strategic. And then we had people like Mr. Donald, Mr. Glean, and so guys now. They said, okay, we were not just going down to Intercall to win one event and, you know, Lando winning the 100, Trevor just winning the Javelin. We are going down to win, you know. And as a matter of fact, in 19, we went down, at, well, I had usually I went down a couple of a day or two on before because. I don't travel well. I kind of vomit on the bus. You know those buses, both buses and so on. You know, so, so I usually went down a day before, and then I would go by up by GBSs. Kind of intimidation. That time we, you know, yeah, go see Maitland and them, and they said, "Well, Lando is down here already," and so on. <laughs> yeah, you got it. You, you know. Oh, I didn't know you were that strategic. <laughs> uh, yes, we had to because you know at that time you know we had to be, you know, you had to be exceptional. You can't be as good as them. Because the, the judgments are usually against you. So we right. knew that would happen. So we can't come close. We have to win outright. Yes, I heard that. You have to win big. That yes. was Percy's words. And when we won in 1980, we broke seven records. Whoa, yes. <laughs> You're giving me goose pimples. Yes, we did. We did. You know, we did a, and travel record and so on. It's, I mean... It, it was just impressive. You know, we've never been there before, you know. But I want to come back with Cressy because I know they'll ask the things about Cressy and Alison. Yeah, so Alison, Cressy and I, I, I spent a lot of time with Think about it. I spent seven years with the guy. So <laughs> he, 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 was very, he was very influential in my life. You know, very, very influential. Yeah. You know, so even when um, I wrote my, um, I wrote my doctoral dissertation, one of the things... I see here is that um, a special thanks to Mr. Criswell Julian, my high school principal, who allowed me to discover the many facets of my potential. You know, I gave that that's part of my doctoral dissertation that I gave tribute to him. I, 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 well, so we're on the same wavelengths. I think people ought to get, the, we ought to recognize our heroes. Correct. Correct. We, we, we don't do a good job of it. We really no, we do. don't. And that's why we're doing this channel. You also told me you were valedictorian. What year was that? That's in 1980. So in, okay. 19, yeah, so in 1980, we won mm -hmm. Um, And um, so I was the valedictorian. And I have my speech. I'm going to just read a couple parts of it for you. Yes, I want you to read it. Yes, you know, so it says here that now, let me tell you the details of the speech now. So, so I wrote the speech with Cressy, to be honest with you. Myself and Cressy wrote the speech. And I had to practice that speech about 20 times. <laughs> oh, yes, because Cressy was, you know, Cressy put in those long phrases. <laughs> and, you know, sometimes you have to breathe before you can go to the next sentence. You know, so, so let me read it for you. It said that um, Parton says Shakespeare is such sweet pain. And we, the class of 1980, find it so. For after many years together at this school, we now must bid farewell and separately venture out into the world beyond these doors. But your excellency, Sir Paul and Lady Schoon, Archdeacon and Mrs. Hicks, Minister of Communication and Body, Parents and Friends, 
You have all come here today to help to render the spans of parting less severe than they might otherwise be. And we are thankful. You say sentences, I don't even understand what they mean now, even today. <laughs> <laughs> today we graduate from this school. We graduate into life. As we leave our school still voyaging, as our motto says, we begin voyages of our own. Voyages academic, cultural, and spiritual. How well we succeed will depend upon the suddenness of the vessels in which we back and the course we set fear weather at all times if at any time nor must we be wary of the toil and the travail as we roll from stabbled from stabbled to labbled <laughs> for we are part of our school's wanderings during these years we have gone with her from place to place from pool to pavilion until finally we have fetched port here at Telescope, our final docking, where much fittings and refittings have yet to be done. It has been a rough journey and our quarters were never ideal, yet we have survived. And we, a fighting spirit, our school has instilled in us the spirit that has encountered all the perils of the deep. As students, we have, try to keep up and uplift the name of our school. Our annual sports meeting is a great social event in St. Andrews. And in this, our year of graduation, to go no further back, our school won the inter-secondary cricket competition against all comers in celebration of the first anniversary of the revolution. And that was cricket we were talking about. That was, so that's 1980. The yeah. first competition cricket SAS won it. Right. No. Not satisfied with this, and to be consistent, we ripped the insides out of all opposition at the 1980 Intercall Games, setting no fewer than seven records, and thus ensuring that one third of all the records at this level are held by SAS. Our sorrow is that our mate, Trevor James, who set three of those records, which we are certain will remain in the books for a long time, is not here with us today. His progress in athletics has taken him overseas for eight months of training in that field. Because in 1980, Trevor graduated, but he was not at the graduation because he got, you know, so we were just paying, I was just paying a tribute to him. Very, very, very good. No. And he said, academically, in spite of the many drawbacks facing the school, chief among these, no laboratory. Our teachers have put in a tremendous amount of work, including extra classes in the spare time. Our principal, who has been here for over 25 years, because Chris came in 1952, and I think he, lived, he left in 1986. You know, that's a lot of years. Yes. As, we, as I have said, the staff has played such an important role, you know, in our development with the graduating class, thank them for their faith and the institution. We would like to see them reap a rich reward. As we leave, we would like to say, we would like to remind our successors that as students, they have a tremendous and significant role to play in maintaining the tradition that we have set. In this respect, we urge you to make the fullest use of the facilities. Parents have a part to play that is of permanent importance also. This entails monitoring the overall progress of the children at school, cooperating with school authorities by the continuous support. This is important and must be understood by parents if they wish their children to do well. We are passing on, but it means that our school must continue with the tradition. There can be no substitute for cooperation. Finally, as we take leave of our alma mater, we leave our best wishes for her continued success. We take away many memories of a varied and we shall never see the like again. We shall not wax to sentimental at this pattern of the ways, but sass, tis hard to give you up. Parting is such by the great 
in collaboration with the great Mr. Cresswell Julian. You know, so I kept pattern is such sweet sorrow. I remember those lines from from uh, Shakespeare. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, in listening to this, it it I read a book by M. Z. Mark. Yes, yeah, uh, so you may so have thought that, about him. You know, because it's it's important that um he just he was like our he was like our dad, you know, our extended father. Because remember, at this that time, right? Our parents never came to sport meet, you know. My my mom, my dad never, never, my dad they never came to a sport. And that was not just unique to me. It was all of us, Trevor, all of us. Our, our, our parents never came to a sport meet. But I think what it was that uh, for them, sports were games. Correct. It's, Correct. it's And they had work to do. Yes. <laughs> they had, they, 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 they had they, food they, on the table. <laughs> no time for games. That it, it, it was, it's really, you, 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 you sure, right? And, you know, but they, they heard about what we were doing and they were proud of us, mm -hmm. you know, but they had, they had other priority. It was, it wasn't part of the culture for them to be there, you know. I must ask, you're Simmons, are you related though to Patrick? Patrick Simmons? Patrick and I are, are not related. Most people think we are, we, we aren't, we, are, we, we aren't related, but, um, mm -hmm. And maybe if we go search, we maybe maybe we are. But, but we're from <laughs> Grenada, so it, there might be. That's something. what I say. Yeah, you know. oh, but tricks is tricks is my. We we've stayed in. There are certain people that you know that, you know. I was very fortunate that when he was the minister of sport, I I took a sabbatical and I spent an entire semester at St George's University. Mm -hmm. So we, we got to reconnect, and, you know, and I got to travel with him around the island and so on, you know, while he was developing various projects and so on, because I, I spent an entire semester, I taught research methods class at St. George's University. So, oh, you know, so nice. yeah, so it, it was it was nice to kind of reconnect and to go to Intercal in 2014. And so uh, let's just take a little break and, you know, and see the call at the state and so on. I run on grass and gravel, you know, so <laughs> <laughs> let's take a break and then I'll come back and we'll talk a little bit more about that. Correct. Mm -hmm. 